Welcome back. As promised, we have our very own Okaloosa County School District, and representing them is Mary Beth Jackson, the superintendent, and Marcus Chambers, the assistant superintendent. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I know off the camera I had shared with you some of my biggest victories and why I'm such a huge fan and lover of the Okaloosa County School District, getting all three of my kids off my payroll <laughs> and on to further education. So uh, thank you very much for that. I want to make sure that I, I express that. But I know this is coming up on your second year, Mary Beth, and uh, share with the with the folks, what's your biggest victory this year? Well, first of all, I want to thank the Niceville Val P. Chamber for allowing us an opportunity to showcase our wonderful county and our students. There were many of these when I thought about accomplishments, but I think first and foremost, being able to work alongside our team, and we are Team Okaloosa, Amen. Uh, and bringing this school back to the status of A, a from a yes. B. I'm very, very pleased, and also that Okaloosa schools are number seven across the board in every grade level and in every subject area. We are number five in the state in earning AP, IB, ACE, and we are number nine in the state in earning industry certifications. So I think for me, seeing the overall health of the district improve. We are a very healthy financial district. Yes. We have a above what we are required to have in our reserves. So when I look at our district, we may not have a number one in anything, but we are consistently in the top 10 across the board in all areas because we feel like we need to serve the needs of all of our students. Yeah, and it's not about focusing on one particular no. goal. It's about us just doing a good job, period, across the board, Absolutely. educating our children, whatever area they're headed in. Right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I, Absolutely. I have to agree with you. That is a fantastic victory. And uh, Mr. Chambers, uh, recently the FCAT scores were released and uh, statewide. And if you were to look through those test scores, it appears as though the students of Oklahoma County perform pretty well. Would, would you agree? I would agree yeah. and you know first of all I'd like to say that you know we are extremely proud of our students our yes. teachers and our principals and specifically our, our teachers and principals who you know do so much for our schools and sacrifice but additionally um, very proud of the fact that our students are learning yes. and our schools are making progress and Ms. Jackson talks about to our principals all the time that she does not expect perfection but she expects progress and like she mentioned, you know, we're back to being an A-plus school district once again. And if you look at the previous year, we had approximately 19 schools that were A schools. And this year, we're on track for 24 of our schools to be A-plus <laughs> schools. So it's something that we're extremely proud of. Sure. Basically, we're top 10 in the state in all areas in reading, in grades 5 through 8 in math. We're top 8 in the state. And it's not all about state rankings. It's about the kids. But fortunately or unfortunately, across the state they do look at state rankings but we're doing extremely well and mrs jackson's uh message of not perfection but progress is alive and well yes it sounds uh, uh, wonderful improvements and and it looks like our, our future's bright so you, oh, yes. you can't argue with that mrs jackson you, you've made a purpose purposeful decision to change the way we're doing our our budgeting and how we're going to manage our money and, it, and it's a uh, you've moved away from site-based management, and there's been a ton in the, uh, in the paper about central-based budgeting model. And what, what, Share with the viewers, what factors led you to, to make that decision? When I first started, the first day on the job, I decided that I was gonna get into our schools myself, see mm -hmm. for myself. As I began to visit our schools and walk our schools and talk to our teachers and talk to our principals and the students, I began to realize that there was quite a bit of inequity in programs in our schools. We had elementary schools with no music, no art, and I began to ask questions. Now, why is this? Yeah. Why is this happening? We, as a public education organization, should be providing a standard of service throughout the district for every student, no matter where you live or what your parents do, you should have the same level of service. Amen. And we looked and we began to see that this was not the case. 
And that was the biggest reason. And I started visiting other counties, looking at what they were doing. And I began to realize that 85% of the districts in Florida have central-based budgeting. There's a reason for that. It works. So we decided to look at what was good about site-based and what was good about central-based budgeting, and we combined those two. Kind of a hybrid. A hybrid model. Sure. Principals still have money that they have complete control over Which in their should. school. Absolutely. They hire their teachers. They, they are in complete control of that. However, there are things that we now have taken control of that they don't have to worry about. Uh, an example would be electricity bills. An older school, a 40 or 50 year old school, their electric bills were huge, but they received the same formula of funding that a brand new school had that was very energy efficient. Well, that also doesn't allow you to uncover those problems no, if you it don't doesn't. see all that data. No, sure. it doesn't. Yep. And we saw several things there, and we looked, and there was money just sitting out there, not being used for students, to the tune of a, several million dollars. And we thought, this is not right. Yeah. Taxpayers give us this money to educate their children. It should be used across the board in this district. So we began a year ago working with our CFO, looking at how we could implement this, and we came up with our hybrid model, and we are very excited. Our schools are excited. First time they've had music in many years. They, they, they are just thrilled. So the places where you get economy of scale, you've moved that yes. up and centralized yes. it and you still allow it. Yes. It, it sounds like a win-win-win. So. It, it gives them control over the things they need to have control of. Over, but I don't want them worrying about yeah. how am I going to pay the light bill. bill. <laughs> that should not that's, be their worry. No, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Mr. Chambers, the state of Florida has recently adopted new standards for math and language arts, two things that are really, really important, math and English, excuse me, two things that are very important to us. A lot of, uh, a lot of counties are saying they're not prepared. How, how are we sitting? Uh, we are prepared. And over the course of the last 20 months, we've been preparing. Uh, Ms. Jackson, when she came into office, she stated that these new standards will be in place in 2014-15 and we need to be ready. So 20 months ago, we started that uh, progress. And it started with making sure that our teachers understood the standards, but also that they understood what it takes instructionally to meet them. Mm -hmm. So we ensured that everyone in the school district in terms of elementary, middle, and high school, they all received the same professional development so we could get a, a foundational knowledge. But from there, we started going deeper. So through professional development, working with our principals, and working with our teachers, we, we've made a lot of progress. But these new standards, they do require a change in instruction. And an example would be, in the past when we wrote, our students would basically be able to write off of anything that might be fictional. We, we could make it up. Sure. And now, they'll have to read a source or two, answer a question, mm -hmm. but then answer it, answer it based on giving evidence from the text. Yeah. So it's a much different type of writing. But I believe and, and know that we are prepared for the demands of these new standards. How fantastic. I'm, I'm sorry that we're running out of time, but, but Ms. Jackson, if you'd like to uh, share with the citizens of Oakland County your final thought. I just want to say that we are a very healthy district. We are strong. We are turning this aircraft carrier around, and we are making progress. And it is because we have fantastic teachers, fantastic students, and we live in paradise. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you, uh, the Morrow family is your number one fan, so whatever you need, just give me a call. If I can help out, I certainly will. And thank you for all that you're doing for our community, our children, and our future. Uh, thank you, and thank the about. chamber. Yes, God thank bless. You. Don't go away. We're going to hear all about E-Date, and I'm sure that's going to be interesting, so don't go away.